Hello everyone, so what I want to do in part three, part three of four now, uh, because I have just way too much stuff to get done to cram into one video. It'll take uh, probably another week to push out the final part, which will be the finished product. Uh, but what I wanted to do was kind of show you my raw impressions uh, of two bending. You know, it looks it looks easy when you see the pros do it. When someone like Jay from Jay's Two Cents bends PETG to me, it's like second nature to him. He's even admitted that. He, he's done it so many times that, you know, he knows exactly how long to hold it. He knows when the tube is, is just right for bending. And uh, I experienced quite the opposite, uh, especially when I first started out, I was either keeping it too close to the heat gun or I wasn't getting it hot enough. Uh, if you've seen a few pics on Twitter, you follow me on, on social media, then you, you are well aware of my frustration. So that's what I want to show you up front, just how frustrating it was to kind of to kind of jump into the whole two bending process. Uh, but then after a while, of course, just like anything else, you do get used to it, you get better at it uh, the more you practice. I went through about probably, let's see, there are four of these packets in each large box that you saw in part one of PETG tubing. And I think I went through about three large boxes. So I wasted a good, you know, 50 or 60 feet of PETG tubing just by practicing and, you know, trying to get my first bend right. And I started off with the most difficult bend of them all. So you'll see all of that here. Uh, I do hope you enjoy or at least find amusing my frustration with the entire process. Okay, you want to know what the definition of insanity is? It's repeating the same process and expecting different results every single time. I got this heat gun here, and I kind of set up some chairs because these posts are a good distance away from the uh, from the heat gun that, you know, it's, it's not going to absolutely torch these PETG tubes. But, uh, I am extremely pissed off because I've gone through all of this and sorry about the focus i'm just kind of sitting here because i've been doing this for the past two hours and i've trashed everything look it's, it's like some kind of inhaler i I've, I've had a few close attempts this one was a pretty this one was pretty close okay I'm, I'm looking for a specific bend to go from my reservoir to my radiator and this just i mean look there's bubbles there are bubbles down there. The cut isn't straight. Uh, and the thing is pretty flat on top, mainly because the silicone inserts that I have are slightly too narrow. So the inner diameter of the PETG tube is just uh, a, little too, a little too big for, for this insert. So that's why it's kind of, uh, you can see even here on this test run, you can see how the outside turns here are slightly dipped in from uh, what the diameter of the pipe should be. That's just because, like I said, the silicon is a little narrow. So I've got this heat gun on and I'm gonna set the tripod up and I'm just gonna show you what I've been doing. Um, you know, I've been, I've been listening to the pros, I've been listening to Jay's Two Cents and I, uh, I watched a few videos from Paul's Hardware and you know, just guys that I trust who have done this a few times and I've been, what I, I've been doing what I think is, is correct but I'm just not getting a solid enough result that I'm satisfied with at this point uh, to, to just want to throw these bends into uh, Project Blue Sky. So, uh, yeah, just you know, I'll just show you the frustrations involved with this. This isn't, you know, this isn't something that uh, anybody could just pick up and do the first time. This takes a lot of practice, and as you can see, I have my graveyard of PETG tubes that will just never be used for anything because this is a uh, relatively difficult task. So after becoming extremely frustrated and just toughing it out basically, you just gotta keep pushing. If you, if you stop and end up throwing, you know, like some cheap 90s in there, like 90 degree fittings and stuff, then it's not a real hard line tubing build. I mean, sure you can put, you know, straight hard line tubes anywhere. Anyone can cut tubing, uh, but it takes a lot of patience to actually bend 
the tubes the ways that you need them to bend in order to uh, eliminate the need for those uh, metal 90s and, and 45s and such. Of course, there are instances in which you would absolutely have to use those. Uh, fortunately, in this build, I don't have any of that, which is why I didn't want to use any. I mean, I know I can get away with using just the, the tubes themselves. So that's, that's why I was really trying. Sorry, I haven't turned my phone on mute. That's why I'm really trying to just make this whole thing about the PETG and, and not about the, uh, the uh, you know, cheap shortcut fittings, if you will. So the way that I have it set up now, I have this bend here, which is the one that, that you just saw that, that part I was working on. Uh, it, this took about 15 attempts. I went through a good, you know, 20, 30 feet of PETG just for this one bend. So remember we have the tube coming from the outtake of the CPU block running to the uh, rear port on the top radiator. And then we have this tube that I just kind of bent. It's not really a, it's probably like a 20 degree angle. Uh, bent and then bent back, of course, to lead into the intake of the back rad. So that's what we got so far, just two of the pipes and we need another, well, three, uh, but until the graphics card blocks get here, all we can do really in this video is run the tube from here to the back rad. Now this is gonna be difficult. I'm gonna turn the, uh, turn the case kind of sideways here in a second. You'll see what I'm talking about, but there are a few things that make this particular bend extremely difficult to do. I haven't even attempted it yet because I know this one's probably gonna be tougher than this one. Uh, I now see that. So what I'm gonna have to do is, is either fit a 90 on here immediately, kind of like this one here, and just kind of already start out that way. Sorry, camera's not. And just kind of already start out that way, or I can, Hang on, I'll just run it like this. I got a G quarter here and I'll just kind of let it pop out and then bend it and then bend it again. Uh, but then once I bend it again, I'm going to have to realign it to make sure that it'll properly uh, align with the, the, the rear port here. Now, there's just a bunch of stuff involved with this one, uh, with this one tube bend that is going to be very challenging. So I figured I would film this one because this one's going to be the most difficult. You guys can see how frustrated I'll likely get with this one. So without further ado, I have uh, not this tube. I have a few other things. Oh, something else I do want to mention. Uh, so I bought this. This is like for P, P what is this? PVC, I think, and uh, a few other plastic tubes. So I figured, oh, this would be perfect. And a few of you on Twitter did say that it would be good. You've seen other people use this kind of cutter before to cut tubing. I do not recommend this for PETG. Just take my word for it. Uh, the problem with this, uh, and I'll show you right here, there's some B-roll. Uh, when you cut this tubing, what happens is the PETG kind of warps because it's, it's kind of a soft tubing in the sense that you can actually bend it, you know, and, and, and kind of contour it the way you want without actually applying heat at all. And because it's a little more structurally sound than acrylic, you can get away with that without, you know, seeing splits and spider cracks and all that good stuff. Uh, but the problem is, you know, if you're cutting too close to one side of the tube, like this right here, uh, and then you'll definitely end up warping the corner. You may not even actually cut through it. This isn't the sharpest blade. So you'll just have a lot of kind of aftercut maintenance to take care of, and it's just not ideal. So now I recommend something else. The pros know where to go. Um, I'll link something in the description that I think would be a good replacement for, for this right here. Oh, and one last thing before we get to the tube bend, uh, I wanted to bring up the drain port issue. So you guys were talking about how I'm gonna need one. Obviously that's something you would need for, for any uh, custom water loop. Uh, you wanna flush that fluid out probably every few months or so. There are different people who say different things about you know time you wanna leave the fluid in the loop before flushing it. And even if I wanna change it, I'm definitely gonna need to have a drain port. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of add on an adapter whenever I need to drain the loop. So on top of this res here, there's actually another opening. It's a G quarter fitting. I could have actually run fluid from the top here and included that in the loop, but I didn't have much space to do that. Uh, and this reservoir is actually quite tall. So I have a, uh, a G quarter 90 degree adapter that will, I guess, be oriented toward the camera. And then I'll use this ball valve here. That's kind of like my on and off switch of sorts. And I'll stick that on the end. And then whenever I want to drain the loop, I'll just kind of pull the case down, uh, left side panel down, and then uh, let the fluid drain. Of course, I'll have to rotate the case and kind of flip it around in weird ways to get the fluid out of the blocks and whatnot, but that's kind of inevitable. I didn't want to have, you know, like a three-way splitter and something weird just sitting in the open of the case. I wanted it to look very closed and very cohesive, so I'm willing to pay the price of setting up the drain port after the fact rather than leaving something dorky exposed. There's also a port at the back of the reservoir. That's kind of my bad. I didn't take advantage of that earlier, but it's not really aligned with either of the uh, grooves in the in the back of the case anyway. So 
Yep, that's my take on that. So a few things to keep in mind, especially if you're gonna be using this heat gun indoors, this is just a cheap Wagner from Home Depot. Apparently all the cool kids use this one because it's cheap, but it gets the job done. Uh, open a freaking window and turn on the fan because this will heat up your room, especially a small room, in a matter of minutes. Uh, and then also, if you're gonna be working with really tight bends, wear some gloves only because the, the pipe, about an inch to two inches away from the heat source, will still be scolding hot. So, you know, these are just little rubber padded gloves, actually electrical gloves, but uh, you could use these uh, to keep that immediate heat away from your hands. It, it will burn after a while, especially if you're holding it over it for um, a few minutes at a time. So let's get going. I recommend starting off with high heat to get the thing going and then turning it down to low heat, especially if you're impatient. This stuff takes quite a while to do. You'll see about a minute to two minutes to keep the, uh, to get the PETG malleable enough to start bending without creating kinks and bubbles and all that good stuff. Oops, something else I forgot. Don't forget your silicone insert. This one's slightly smaller than the ID of the PETG tubing, so the, the bends aren't perfect. Uh, far from that, actually, but it, it won't impede flow by any substantial degree. If you don't bend the tubes with any kind of insert uh, inside the tubing, what'll happen is it'll kink on the inside. It'll just kind of like close up very sharply and that's not good for fluid flow. And then also the outside will collapse because there's nothing to keep it from, from doing that. You can already see it slightly bend. That's because I have it on high. Once you see that, go ahead and turn it down to low. You're gonna want this to uh, kind of drag out. If you rush it, you'll definitely get bubbles. That's just something I've noticed. You see, if I start to bend it now, I start to get a small kink there, see at the bottom? Or whatever you want to call it. It's just a, it's a ridge that you don't want on the inside. That means the inside's not hot enough. So you don't want to bend it with that showing up. And as you can see too, we're starting to get the bubbles, uh, which means that two things happen. So first off, I was trying to bend it too soon. So it, it definitely uh, kinked up there in the middle. And then when I tried to correct it, I basically pushed it closer to the, to the, uh, to the heat source. So you can kind of see the bubble showing up right in there. That is undesirable. That makes this entire tube, especially that bend structurally unsound. Uh, so if you see bubbles, start over. And just for the heck of it, I'm gonna keep holding this over the flame just to show you, you know, it can get really bad. You see, this is just a liquid now. I mean, I could pretty much contort this however I want and it'll just move with it. Uh, so yeah, severely overheated. It's just, you get those huge bubbles with PETG and yeah, this is complete trash now. Yeah, so I had this whole bend planned out and uh, I left the silicone tube in the entire time, tried to pull it out and the tube snapped. So yeah, I gotta start from scratch again. The joys of PETG bending. This is, this is some lovely stuff, folks. You need so much patience, especially when you're first starting out, uh, in order to get these things just right. Oh yeah, I'm gonna end this video on an epic note. So this tube right here, this thing looks a little crazy. You're probably wondering where this is supposed to go. This is supposed to run from the CPU up to the top 360 mil radiator. This was, believe it or not, my second attempt. I'm actually getting pretty good at this. I was uh, terrible at first. I went through about four large boxes of PETG tubing before I was able to nail my first successful bend. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting better at it. And now granted, my, my bends aren't perfect. You can see there's they're still uh, flat spots on the top and it's kind of jagged. It's, it's not a perfect, uh, perfect bend by any means, but it's good enough. And uh, what we're gonna do now is put it in the build so we can see the finished product. That's how I'm gonna end the video. So here we go. I'm gonna swing the camera around here. Okay, so what I was talking about, uh, it's gonna run from here up to 
the opening on the back side of the uh, top radiator. And, oh, we got it backwards. Okay, so this is where it's, wait, no, I still got it backwards, there we go. So we're gonna swing it on in. Uh-huh, all right, got it aligned there. Okay, that one's pretty much good to go. And then up top here, she's just gonna, oh yeah. Oh yeah, all right, now let's, uh, woo, I tell you what, for my second attempt, I, I'm gonna brag a little bit. That, that was one heck of a bend. It took so long to do, I was just so, I was so, uh, I guess, precise with my bends because I didn't want it to, to, you know, start bubbling up. I didn't want it to kink anywhere, and I really didn't want it to do it over again. So I really took my time on that one, and I, I really think it paid off. So that right there is, uh, is what we've got so far in Project Blue Sky. Of course, the only two bends we are waiting on, the bend from the reservoir pump to the, the water blocks for the GPU that will be in parallel, uh, both GPUs will be in parallel here with that one block from Alpha Cool, and then from there to the uh, intake. You can see it says in there. A few of you are concerned about like my orientation. Uh, you can't tell, but it says in on the inside, and this is out over here. So in out, and the pump will be moving from uh, the water will be moving from from here up through there. So those are the two bends that we're waiting on. The water block should come in uh, sometime this week. And then that will, that'll be it for part four. We'll fill the thing up, make sure that we don't have any leaks. And Project Blue Sky will be finished. Uh, but let me know what you think about, uh, about what we've got so far. Uh, I'm honestly I'm honestly proud of myself for that bend. That bend took a long time. I'm glad I, I'm glad I nailed it without having to waste like a whole day on it. Uh, this one here, I might end up redoing this one just because it's a little, it's, it's got some imperfections, particularly down here. This one, I'm just gonna leave. This one was a, Royal pain, uh, but you know, after about <laughs> two or three boxes of PETG, you nailed that one. This one only took about two or three attempts, and then this one took two attempts here. And this one was by far uh, the most challenging in terms of you know the number of bends in it, whereas this one was just challenging because there were so many bends taking place in such a small space. Uh, but that's it. One more big look at Project Blue Sky as uh, as she is right now, and uh, we'll be. We'll be getting back at it for part four sometime this week. Uh, I'll, I'll be uploading a few videos that don't have to do with Project Blue Sky for now. I still have the gloves on. So, uh, but yeah, so you'll see a motherboard review and uh, maybe a few other just kind of benchmarks and, and whatnot. Uh, and then we'll round this thing up with part four sometime next week. This is Salazar Studio. Thanks for bending with us. That's a new one.